Anyway, let's welcome in Mark Schimmel, the Courier Post. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Sully. Are you, have you perfected your Mike McGarry impersonation? Uh, not quite yet. Sully. Not, not, ready, not ready to unveil the, that? Nah, that might be an end of the year special. All right. <laughs> I want you to have us both on. And then we'll see if, if they can if the uh, listeners can decide who the real Mike McGarry is. <laughs> there you go. That's my goal. <laughs> What's happening, man? Just uh, getting ready to head out to Hamilton. Big football game today. West Stepford at St. Joe. Nice. Uh, wanted to get yeah. your your thoughts. Obviously, we've been talking about this pretty much all morning. We had uh, Scott Goodale of Rutgers Wrestling on board early in the show talking about the social media and the effects and and all that kind of stuff, everything that's going on with St. Joe this week. Uh, what was your initial impression when you when you heard the story come out about the Snapchat video and, and the suspensions? Well, the, the video got emailed to me, and I saw it and thought, well, I mean, I, I just was really a wait-and-see type of deal because I didn't think it was uh, a deliberately, like, harmful type of video. But at the same time, obviously, you know, it was inappropriate language used. That, you know, I, the reaction to the whole thing is kind of, I don't know, it's kind of just a shame that any of it happened. And I don't really know. Uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's just I've seen things that are, that are much worse, but obviously there's things that are more appropriate as well. So it just kind of is what it is, you know. Are you, are you surprised, Mark, that this kind of thing just keeps happening with high school athletes and social media? No, not at all. No? They're teenagers. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, let's all take a look in the mirror and think about if all our stuff was on social media when we were teenagers. I mean, it would have been a nightmare for everybody, uh, myself included. I mean, come on. Teenagers make mistakes. They're, they're not overly uh, – I don't want to say they're not smart because they are, but they're just – uh, inexperienced. They they don't understand necessarily the possible ramifications. They think it's harmless. That's what we love about youth, right? The naivety. And at the same time, it can come back to bite you. But it doesn't surprise me. I mean, as long as time goes on, uh, teenagers are going to get in trouble for stuff that older people look at and say, oh, they should know better than that. Talking with Mark Tribble, the Courier Post. And Mark, what do you think is the... Um the responsibility of coaches in this day and age, it, it's got to be tough to be a high school coach. There's only so much you can do to educate your players on this kind of thing and be mindful of them and watchful of them. Uh, what? How much responsibility does a high school coach have in these kind of situations? I think that's it. The, the high school coach has a responsibility to educate his kids, to hammer home the message. I'm sure that, that happened at probably at St. Joseph, probably at a lot of schools. Uh, you said, you know, I mean, this is a new focus, kind of a new dimension of problems that are popping up here. Um, a, a coach's job is to educate, probably to monitor some of the stuff or to have somebody who monitors it. And uh, at that point, I mean, what more can you do? You can't, you can't take kids' bones from them. You can't, you know, <laughs> I don't know, mo- follow them home and see what they're tweeting. You know, this is just uh, their hair is just tied at a certain point, Sully. That, that's got to be a huge fear of any high school coach. Is oh my god, I hope one of my players doesn't do something that really brings you know shame on the program, and and that's got to be in the back of mind of, of any high school coach, I would think. All right, and I'm sure coaches that are around it long enough now that with the uh, advent of social media, the longer they're around, it's going to happen to them probably at some point or another too. You know, I mean, it's just just seems inevitable that at some point a kid's going to do something on social media that may not warrant a, a, a serious uh, penalty, but may still warrant a talking to or a advisory type of situation from a coach. It, it just seems a matter of time. I, I don't know if you put these things in, in the hands of teenagers, eventually somebody's going to do something that maybe isn't, isn't the right thing to do. And that, that doesn't speak on a kid's character necessarily, it just speaks on kind of the odds. Talk with Mark Tribble of the Courier Post, and uh, Mark, let's let's get back to the field here uh, and talk about some of these teams in South Jersey. Uh, you were out there at St. Augustine Prep last night. 
Give me your impressions of that team. Here's a team that was kind of floundering a little bit at one and two. They really got the doors blown off them by St. Joe in that week three and, and almost a complete 180 turnaround since then. You know, I was talking to, to Joe Bonchek, the linebacker, senior linebacker, after the game, and he said, hey, we kind of looked ourselves in the mirror after that game and said, we're not working hard enough. And, and they really got after it in practice, you know, three, three and a half hours a day, holding each other accountable. Um, so it, it's been quite a turnaround for the Hermits. Yeah, I think it has. And I think that there's a lot of different contributing factors that go into that. What I saw last night compared to what I saw four weeks ago is a team that's sure of itself and knows what it's good at and what it maybe it's not good at. Um, and using that, and that goes to the coaching staff and it goes to the kids and it, and it goes to kind of a level of certainty uh, and confidence that comes with winning three games in a row. They translated to four in a row. I, I just saw a team that stepped up and made some big plays when they should. They looked sure of their assignments. I think there were times against St. Joe when I saw them that they didn't look that way. Last night, I'll give you a perfect example. Holy Spirit's got the ball and all the momentum in the world down six points. Nazir Hill's playing cornerback where he doesn't ever play until, you know, last night, a freshman. And he intercepts that out, he intercepts that out route uh, from the Spartans in, in a, just a bang bang type play, excellent play by him. That stops the momentum. Eventually, Prep, you know, holds onto the ball and, um, turn things around really in terms of the snowball going so I thought they were a team that looked like they knew what they wanted to do they did it and when they were in some tight spots they come came up with big plays that's a great point Mark I mean to have a freshman jump that route I mean that just shows good coaching the you know he he was aware of what was happening in that play and to react that quickly really just shows like hey he's been trained on this this is what they're going to run look for this in this situation and uh, really good job by, you know, and, and like you said, that secondary, they, they were going to get tested because the front seven wasn't, you know, Holy Spirit didn't think they could they could successfully run the ball a lot on that front seven. And here you have a secondary that, that was, was out two players. And Sierra Ray's been out with a broken rib for a couple of weeks. And uh, Jalen Dakota was out with an injury uh, for the whole second half. So you're, you're asking Nazir Hill and Justin Shorter to come up big, and they both did. Yeah, and – you know, let's let's take a look too at what it means, Sully. It means that these kids who are phenomenal players and athletes and students of the game, um, you know, it means that they're playing with their instincts, which means they know their assignment. Uh, I think there's times when teams, you can tell a team that's not really clicking. There's that extra half step they're not taking. They're not jumping the route. They're not. Uh, taking the right tackle lane because maybe they're a little unsure. I didn't see anything about St. Augustine last night that looked unsure. I mean, I, I don't. I, you think that's a fair assessment? Oh, definitely, without a doubt. And and that's the biggest key in the last four weeks. Like you said, in that St. Joe game, they were a little out of sorts on certain plays and, and were getting hit with big plays. I mean, Holy Spirit made a couple of big plays, but really not anything that would, was going to change the outcome of that game. Yeah, it takes hard work, good coaching, belief and confidence and those things start to click together when you've got the jimmies and joes like they have and you understand the x's and o's like they're understanding right now it all clicks together and what you're seeing is a team that that really could do some damage best running back in south jersey now that does that title now go to uh, isaiah rakes <laughs> the bowling <laughs> well, ball I, know, I think uh some of the other candidates the jada byers and, and jaden abrams and uh, Johnny Martin, maybe not Johnny Martin and, and Abrams, I know they're a little bit bigger, but Jada Byers, the little uh, little water bug, I think maybe three <laughs> of him could fit in Isaiah Rakes. I mean, what what a, <laughs> what a uh, phenomenal athlete for his size, and and it's so it was so cool to see him kind of just doing the fridge Perry impersonation. Well, how about that way. last touchdown run? Everybody thinks he's going up the middle. He bounces it outside and goes nine yards down the left sideline. I was like, what is going on here? This guy's tiptoeing yeah, down the sideline at 300 pounds. Yeah, he's a very uh, nimble-footed athlete for sure. <laughs> I, I, I was very impressed with him. And if you'll remember back to the St. Joe game again, that's my only sample size for them this year before Friday night. Uh, he got in some situations, and it just didn't seem to be working. Uh, last night, it worked all the way. He got the ball and knew what to do with it. The line knew how to block for him. And he said, you know, I give credit to my line for opening up the holes. I'm thinking – uh, dude, I don't know if you need any holes. <laughs> you just run everybody over. 
is is he definitely the uh, the biggest dude who's ever won the hats off? Uh, without question. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I think probably second second biggest might have been uh, another Saint Augustine guy in Paul Maduri who's over oh, at okay. uh, Saint Augustine. I mean, I'm sorry, <laughs> at Villanova. At Villanova, I think they're the two biggest. So, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the the big man in Richland uh, come through sometimes with some hatware. Great stuff, as always, Mark. We appreciate it. What do you got on tap for today? Uh, I guess you're going to St. Joe, West Defford. And uh, what are you looking forward to the next week or so? Um, you know, I, I want to see. We have some matchups, I think, that are going to be big in that last week, just just for viewing interest, Salem, Pensgrove, uh, St. Augusta, Williamstown. I want to see if any teams are, are uh, resting on their laurels and maybe looking ahead or if everybody uh, comes out and takes care of business to set up some of those really serious showdowns in week eight. Good stuff, as always, Mark. Keep working on that Mike McGarry impersonation. We're gonna we're gonna want it here around Thanksgiving. Yeah, you got it, Sully. <laughs> Have a good one, man. Awesome. Thanks, bud. Have a great weekend.